Assalamualaikum. Welcome to another video on specimen spotting. Today we'll be focusing on the lungs. And just like before, we won't be looking at the specimens and avoiding the models. So models are easy to identify the specimens that students have trouble with. So let's begin. And this time I'll be using pins to pinpoint the exact spots. Let's pick up a random part of a lung and first orient it. If I were to pick the one on my right, right here, the proper positioning of this lung with respect to its high lung is like so. What I am holding right now in front of me is the left lung. The surfaces, we have the costal surface which faces our ribs. Then we have the metastinal surface on the inside. This is where you have the hilum. And this is the part facing the heart. You have the apex right on top. And you can see the shape is characteristically like a pyramid. Apex is on top. But on the bottom you have the diaphragmatic surface. You can see if it's dome shape. These are the surfaces. For border simply you have an interior border. And this helps in orienting, orienting the lungs. This sharp border will always stay anteriorly. In contrast, the posterior border, which is really rounded, this will be on the back side. This way you know this is actually your left lung with a sharp anterior border, a rounded posterior border, a concave diagrammatic surface, and an apex on top. Let's look at some other parts. Now, the lungs obviously have lobes. The one on the left is only composed of two lobes, as you see in front of you, divided by the oblique fissure. Now, this entire lung is usually covered with pleural membrane. You can see over here, I'm about to chip off a bit of this membrane. You can see this sheet coming off. This is actually your visceral pleura, which covers the lungs. The parietal pleura actually goes along the diaphragm and the body wall. So these lungs are within the visceral pleural membrane. Beside that, in the metastinal surface, you can appreciate the hyla. And this is where students face the most difficulty in identifying which one is actually the bronchus, which one is the pulmonary artery, and which one is the pulmonary vein. Because this is the left side, remember the rule, the bronchus will always be found near the center. It's easy for me to know because I can feel the cartilaginous part of this bronchus. Using this white pin, I'll place this here in the left bronchus. Up above, we have the pulmonary artery and below we have the pulmonary veins. Now here's the twist. Normally arteries have oxygenated blood and should be appearing red. But this is the pulmonary artery, so this one will have deoxygenated blood. So we're gonna put a blue pin right over here. Deoxygenated blood in the pulmonary artery. And the pulmonary veins are rich in blood since they come from the lungs and go back to the heart, here we have the pulmonary veins, red in color. This is what you see in the high lung. You may also appreciate a bit of these blackish discolorations in between. The reason why overall the whole lung is black, this specimen is black, even these hyalurylymph nodes are black, is because this is due to the inhalation of smoke and pollutants in our environment. Most probably this specimen was obtained from locally and here, because the environment is quite polluted, that's why these lungs are filled with all these black particles. He may have also been a smoker as well. Moving on, what are the other impressions we notice here? Perhaps the biggest and most easiest impression that you may notice is this one right over here where my fist is forming. This is what you call your cardiac notch, the impression of the heart. If you can imagine the left lung like this, and to its right, the right lung, in between you have the heart situated and that heart its left ventricle is pushing against this part of the lung you may also appreciate that a bit of the lung is falling down below this is the lingula of the lung the remnant of the third lobe normally the right side lung actually has three lobes and this one only has two turns out that the third lung never develops and this is what you get the lingula what about the impressions Starting from the top, if you go on the back side, over here you will see two structures. You will notice that first and foremost you will have the impression of the esophagus on the back side, going along the border. 
right in front will be the impression of the trachea. Then finally, we have the impression of the subclavian artery, just up on top near the apex. So this artery will then obviously go down and enter into the arch of the aorta. But right over here, at this point, this is where you have your brachiocephalic vein, not artery, the vein here. And uh, having that said, you may notice that there is a curvature right around the hilum which goes on top and comes to the back side. This impression, all the way from top to bottom, this is the impression of the arch of aorta. But keep in mind, it's quite long. It's not just this singular point. It's going all the way from the front to the bottom. This is what the impressions of the left lungs are showing us. And with that said, let's put this one down right over here and look at the right one. Once again, let us orient it. The same principles apply. The sharp border in the front anteriorly, the rounded border on the back side, the apex on the top, and the diaphragmatic surface facing down below. I know that this is now my right lung, position like so. Similarly, this lung is also covered by pleural membrane. So maybe it'll be harder to take off from here. This one was much easier. And you can see that this one actually has three lobes, very nicely distinct lobes you can appreciate. An oblique fissure and a horizontal fissure. Coming to the metastinal surface, you can already know that this is the costal surface. On the metastinal surface, notice how as I'm squeezing the lungs, you can see a bit of the fluid coming out from the top. This is your ep arterial bronchus. There's actually formula inside these lungs. And as I'm squeezing it, all of this fluid coming out is coming from the ep arterial bronchus. So since we use white for that bronchus on this side, we put the white one right over here, like so. Down below in the center, you have the pulmonary artery. And if you recall, the pulmonary artery has the oxygenated blood. So we're going to put a blue pin right over here. And obviously, Oxygenated blood is coming from the pulmonary veins. We'll see two nice pulmonary veins right in front, right over here and here. But we're only going to put in one of them. And this lung is comparatively much more brownish compared to this one. You can see this one was more blackish. Obviously, this specimen was taken from a person who lived in better conditions. Probably didn't smoke at all. Aside from that, what about the impressions? Most of the impressions are the same. Minor differences. You won't notice any lingula here, but the rest are the same as before. You have the esophagus impression right on the back side near the border. Right in front, the impression for the trachea. And just like in that one, we have the impression of the subclavian artery. And down below, the brachiocephalic vein. And keep in mind, this time, this arch on the back side, this arch is not made by the arch of aorta. No, this one is formed by your a zygous vein and just like the aorta, the zygous vein goes from top side to back so we're just going to put it right over here so you can appreciate how it's going from front to back side these are the impressions a bit of the cardiac impression is here but you can as you notice is not as prominent as the one on the left side these are your two lungs right and left sandwiching the heart in the middle so this was the spotting on the lung specimens and you shall the next time we'll be looking at more specimens from the first year.